Welcome to Den of Tools. Hi, ho guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the Den of Tools. And we're here today to answer the question about what size air compressor do you really need? Now, usually what happens is I get somebody asking me about, hey, I've got these tools, or actually, usually I'm looking to buy these tools, and what size compressor do I need to support them? Can I use the blah, blah, blah compressor, this one or that one? And usually, I'll be honest, they are severely underestimating how much of a compressor they're going to need for those tools. I, and I hate to say it because I always tell people not to overbuy compressors. You know, a lot of people end up buying an 80 gallon compressor and all they're going to do is fill up their tires with it. Well, and this is kind of the reverse in many cases. So let's step through it and talk about some of the tools and what so how much air they really need. And what we're talking about here is we're talking about CFM and PSI. Now, a good way to think about this is PSI is now a good way to think about this is PSI is how hard something is pushing, and CFM is how much it's pushing. Like if you can push one block really, really hard, but the other guy can <laughs> can push three of them just as hard, he's got more CFM at the same PSI as you do. All right. So bearing that in mind, <laughs> bear get it. All right, bear that in mind. Let's take a look at some of these tools. All right, first thing on the low end is tire inflation. You don't need much to do tire inflation. Come on, if they can give you those little ones that plug into your cigarette lighter and, uh, you know, and just sit there and putz, a, you know, a little bit of air out and fill up your tire, you can, you know, you can do it with about anything. You're looking like one to two CFM. And unless I say otherwise, we're going to be talking about at 90 PSI. That's kind of like the de facto standard you see a lot of these ratings at. All right. So next up, what we're going to talk about is blow guns. Uh, this is for dusting things off, you know, getting the sawdust out, getting the shavings out, just clearing things out, you know, general use. And this is like, in, in this case, it really doesn't matter whether you're looking at, you know, the dead basic one like this, or you're getting something a little bit fancier like this really nice Capri, you know, air gun here. Any whatever you're doing here, you're looking at one to two CFM on that. Um, you know, yeah, you can run out. Now, tank size can be an issue depending on how much you're using this, but you don't need a whole lot of power to do it. All right, stepping up a little bit more, we're going to talk about nailers. Now, people are often surprised how little uh, power you need for a nailer. And you got to think about it like this. Nailers aren't constantly putting out air. They're just putting out in quick little bursts, just enough to, you know, snap that nail into the, you know, the material you're working in. And so if you're even on a low end brad nailer or all the way up to like, you know, a roofing nailer or something like that, you're going to be using two to three, maybe three and a half CFM for most of these. Now stepping up into the four CFM kind of range. This is where you see a basically what I often think of as the core of the miscellaneous air tools. We've got air ratchets here. They're gonna be around uh, four CFM. We uh, Air hammers are gonna be around four CFM. Even air drills, they're gonna be around four CFM as well. You're gonna see a lot of the, the miscellaneous air tools in this kind of range. Now, this is where things get a little tricky. A lot of people are talk, asking about spray guns and we're talking about paint spray guns here. So what there's really two types that we're going to get into here. And the first one is what I always think of as automotive, but you'll also people using them for thinner base paints like lacquers and stuff like that. And uh, so these are going to be running at, this is going to get a little interesting here. We're looking at four S, uh, SCFM. That's another term. CFM, SCFM is kind of interchangeable. It, there's some technical stuff behind it where I can get into in this video, but we're talking about four SCFM at 40 PSI. So not 90, we're way lower. That's why these are often called high volume, low pressure guns or H <laughs> HVLP. You can never get the acronym out right. Uh, so, but again, these are what you're going to use for thinner base paints. Now it doesn't matter if you're using one of the lower ends or one of the, you know, more expensive. Here's a, $109 paint, uh, paint gun, you're still going to be in that same area. Now, this one's running at 13 CFM at 23 PSI. Okay. But now here, I want to point this out. If you are looking to do like household paint, lacquer paints, the really thick kind of stuff, you want to be using at the very least something like this. All right. 
this is this is another type of high volume, low pressure kind of gun, but it's designed to uh, deal with with those kind of thicker kind of paints. You will have to dilute them down to use it for something like that. If you really want a good finish, you're painting a room or, or house or something like that, you want to go with an airless sprayer. That there's just no two ways about it. You want to get a good, uh, good decent solid uh, airless sprayer because essentially what this is is it's a it's a pump. It's pumping a thick viscous liquid all right i know we're getting away from air compressors but you know it's one of these tangents that always happens when we talk about air compressors all right now we're up into the the five cfm kind of range where we're we're stepping up and we're you're looking at anything that spins high rotation kind of stuff that's where you start really eating up air uh you're gonna get your die grinders in there in that kind of range and then of course the question that you know everyone asks the bear is what about impact wrenches? I want to run an impact wrench. I, I'm going to have bad news for you if you're you're in a home shop and stuff like that, uh, because it's gonna it's gonna cost some money if you really want to run an air uh, impact. Can you run one on a smaller compressor? Yeah, you sh maybe, but you can do it. But you're not going to get what you're paying for. This is a two hundred sixty sixty six dollar. Uh, impact gun. It's a fabulous gun. Ingersoll Rand makes some of the best air guns out there. That said, this thing has a base rating of six, but if you want full impact on it, you're looking at, oh, I think it's like, was it like 23, 24 CFM on it? There's, you're not going to come close to that with most home air compressors. And, you know, and if you're like, well, I'm only using a 3 8 you're in the same area. You know, and even if you want to get, get that out of the way, you want to get a, a quarter uh, inch impact gun, well, I, I got bad news for you still. You're looking for a minimum uh, of six there about and uh, air, con air consumption under load at 18.2. Yeah, that's just the way it is. If you really want, to, I mean, that's what they're there for. You're going to be running them under load. You want the power. You're paying for the power. You, you're going to have to have a big enough air compressor to really do it. Can you use a smaller one? Yeah, but you're just not going to get your money's worth out of your tools. Now, remember I said about things that spin? Well, <laughs> here we go. We got the 3M Random or Orbit. This is like your body sander. Uh, you know, sometimes they use sanders like this in, in woodworking as well. These things are just, they just eat air like like a fiend. Let's see here. They're, uh, the CFM on this one I just had there is, we're looking at a rate of, oh, 17 SCFM on this. And that's just at 90 PSI. That's just operational. All right. That's just anytime you want to use it, you're going to need to be at 17 S, uh, CFM on that. And the smaller cousins here, if you think you're going to get away with it, you know, less on that one. No, not, not so much. You're still in that same range. In, fact, in some cases worse, but you know, what's even worse than that. Getting up to the big grinders. Oh, if you want an air powered grinder, Oh my gosh, you're looking at 23, 24 CFM for something like that. You're going to need a beast of a machine to keep up with these things. As I said, anything that, like, if you notice, look we look back and we're talking about, you know, uh, you know nail guns, you know, blowout tools, uh, just things that are doing quick burst kind of air kind of stuff versus the high spin rate kind of stuff. We're just constantly going and going and going. It just eats the air. All right, and then kind of at the other end, because people always ask me, what about these, you know, air compressors that have like exceptionally high PSI? What about the ones that are saying, you know, it's got 125, 150, 175 PSI? What am I ever going to need that for? Well, here's a couple of ones. They're, they're kind of out there kind of cases. The most common case is going to be a sandblaster kind of thing. This one, they want you to have 150 PSI uh, to run this. So, now, granted, it's going to depend on the media that you're blasting, that sort of thing. But I found with a lot of these, they're going to want a higher PSI on that. Um, another one is not something you're going to likely run across are tire changers. You know, they're not putting out a ton of air, but they need that air. Fairly high pressure. You got to set that bead and whatnot. Also, there's some some industrial and high end commercial nail guns uh, for setting, you know, big anchor nails into cement and steel. Yeah, they 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 are nail guns that do that, and they're they're doing the 150, 175 psi on, on that kind of stuff. Now, at the other other end of it is, I guess I know someone's going to ask, what about inflatables? You know, pool toys. You've got to go. You know, she wants to ride the dinosaur. 
Yeah, I know. I know. Keep it family friendly in the comments. Come on. It's family friendly channel. Anyway, uh, stuff like this, your inflatable beds, boats, any of that kind of stuff. You don't usually want to be using an air compressor. They're just, they're not made for that sort of thing. Can they do it? Yes, but there's better tools out there for it. And really what you want is a high volume inflator. These are low pressure, high volume. That's almost the exact opposite of, of, of the other stuff that we're, we've been talking about. And you can get cheap ones. I mean, this is, this is a cordless one from Sunjo. It's almost identical to the Ryobi. I think Bauer's got one. You know, they're in the 50 to $60 range. They sell super cheap ones for like $15 at Walmart that just plug into an AC, uh, you know, 110, and, and they'll inflate about anything. We've got ha probably half a dozen of those around the house. But let's talk about now about air compressors. So what air compressors, where are you going to get with each air compressor? So we're going to show off a few of them here. This is Harbor Freight. Now, Harbor Freight's been a real go-to for, for home shop air compressors. So we're going to start with them. And you got the basic McGraw here. This is your hot dog style air compressor. Eight gallon, 4.1 CFM at 90 PSI. And that's, you always have to look at the rating. What's the CFM at a certain PSI? And you're looking at 90. Now it will go up to 150. I don't see you ever using this at 150. But anyway, it will do it. But the point is, this is only going to get you to the, the 4.1. Also, you know, got to look at the tank size and stuff like that. That's another calculation you're going to want to, you know, depending on how much you're going to be using them. Um, then we get up into the McGraw 20 gallon. All right. Now this is the oiled one, 20 gallon, 135 max PSI. And again, 4 PS or 4 SCFM at that one. So what you're seeing here is a couple different options in the different style of tank. You got a vertical versus a hot dog, 20 gallon versus 10 gallon. There's a lot of different ways you can slice the air compressor pie, if you will. But if you're going to need more than that, if you're going to want to really jump up, this is the old school central pneumatic 29 gallon air compressor. This will do 5.9, 5.9. And you're like, well, at that point, I can start running, you know, some of my, uh, my impact stuff yeah yeah you can but again you're not gonna get everything out of you're running a low grade impact gun an air ratchet something like that this will definitely do the job but you're not gonna get your full power out of an air impact with something like this even though it is a fantastic compressor don't get me wrong uh, one thing we didn't cover here that you should look at also is plasma cutters plasma cutters they're, they're gonna vary based on the size and the you know, the power rating and stuff that you get for it, but you are going to need to check your CFM rating for your plasma cutter. And I know a lot of people like to run uh, plasma cutters using this compressor. All right, now we're stepping up even more. You want to get in into that, you know, eight to 10 CFM kind of range. Uh, this one's starting at 7.55, so close to eight. This is a Husky at Home Depot. And you're looking at $650 for something like this. This is a, uh, a it's a two-stage compressor, which is nice, which means it's going to be a little bit quieter. But uh, it's nothing fancy, uh, but it's going to get you closer. If you want to jump up some more, how about this 80-gallon uh, Husky air compressor here? And this is going to get you right at that, that 10 CFM here. You're looking at over $1,000. You want to jump up higher, 19 CFM. Check this out, two-stage. This is still at Home Depot. You're looking at $2,200. I kid you not. And if you really want to run that, all that fun kind of stuff, you're looking at trying to do, you know, what is it, like 24 CFM, 25 CFM. You're going to need something like this Quincy here. You're looking at $2,600 and a good amount of space and maybe some earplugs while you're at it. Actually, I honestly don't know how loud this thing is. I would have a DB rating on it. I didn't see it. But the point of the matter is, oh, and you're going to need to run three-phase power to your shop. This is what I'm talking about when I often tell people, look, if you're in a home shop, think about what you're really doing with stuff. Do you really need an air, a big, giant air compressor? Or maybe you just need to get some good you know, cordless tools and be done with it. When you can buy uh, an impact brush here or an impact wrench here for 250, you know there was a time when the argument for the you know the uh, the uh, the air tools was that you the air tools were cheaper and you put all the money in the compressor. 
But the problem is now with that argument is that cordless tools have come down in price to the point where they're they're cheaper they're cheaper than than the air tools. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. Has this answered your questions as to what air compressor you need? Also, if you get any other, you know, questions that you think that, hey, other people need to have answered, comment down below. I'm always looking for good video ideas. If you got any suggestions, post it down below for something you'd like to see a video on. But anyway, you all take care. God bless. And as always, come on, say it with me. Shine on.